thank you all so much. Um, good morning, good morning. I am overflowing with gratitude um, this morning. I'm thankful for the summit um, creators who invited me to this stage. And I'm grateful for each and every one of you sitting here in the audience. So I am Shonda Santana. And my hope today is I'm going to share a message. I'll weave my story personally in and out of the message. And I invite you all to step into the story as well. So I am the founder and the executive director of a local nonprofit here in Athens, Divas Who Win Freedom Center. And our mission at Divas Who Win is to restore dignity. We create a safe space that destroys, I'm sorry, restores stigma and restores dignity to women who are overcoming addiction, prostitution, and sex trafficking survivors. And we do that through peer support services. And the importance of me sharing this mission and some of the work that I get to do with Divas Who Win is simply because there's one word that you're going to hear throughout this presentation that's extremely relevant uh, for your lives, for your businesses, and for your journeys, I believe. So if you will just take this journey with me for the next 15 minutes or so, and I hope that you will leave this room changed. So that is the question that I ask. Are you resilient? And I can answer that question on your behalf. The answer is absolutely. Absolutely you're resilient. Um, some of you had to jump through hoops of fire to even be in these seats today. Um, many people have personal challenges going on, things happening in their families. Um, we did have this thing drop down on us 18 months ago called the global pandemic. So are you resilient? Absolutely. And the work that I get to do at Divas really just revolves and revolves around resilience. These are strong women, Stronger Summit, who bounce back from really difficult circumstances. And so I just want to hitch our hope to your hope this morning. So, what does resilient mean? Let's talk about that definition. It is being able to withstand challenges and difficulties and come back quickly from those conditions. It's also when we're able to recoil and not break or bend under pressure. So has anybody in the last year and a half even, I won't even ask you to reach back any further than that, in the last year and a half, have you been stretched? Have you been bent? Have you been challenged? Again, if I could take the liberty to just guess, I would say yes, you have. So this morning, I want to share a friend of mine with you. Um, her name is Resilience. And I came to know her as a little girl. So that's little Shonda. Um, I'm going to share some deeply personal things with you this morning. But I would be remiss if I didn't wind the hands of time back to a simpler time for me. I'm just a little girl from Asheville, North Carolina. And as you see there in those pictures with my hand on my hip, I got a little bit of attitude. Uh, I'm jumping off of that bridge my mama told me not to. And so uh, Shonda, she had big dreams. She wanted to be a psychologist, an actress, and an author. Uh, but life just didn't quite line up that way for me. So that's when I began to hear resilience, resilience. It was at a whisper back then, but I was a dreamer. And I believe that the breeding ground that allows resilience to build on the inside of us is change and trauma. That's why we need resilience. That's when we kick into resilience, is when we undergo extreme change or trauma in our lives. So the previous slide of Footloose and Fancy Free Shonda, that narrative changed just a few years later. And so I didn't know what the word resilience was. I never heard of it. I couldn't spell it as an eight-year-old. But my goodness, I needed it around the time I turned 12. 
So due to a trauma history from 12 to 17, I found myself dropping out of high school when I was 17 years old. And um, my trauma had really prepared me for where I would go next. So the first part of our mission is that we support women who are overcoming prostitution. So I entered into this lounge um, in Atlanta as an exotic dancer. And you know, that field and that industry has lots of trap doors. So I went in one way and I came out another way 10 years later. And due to that, I needed resilience along the way in that process. So I'm not sure what changes you're sitting in right now. I'm not sure what types of traumatic events have happened within your building and your business or your personal lives even, but I do believe that at this point, resilience was an acquaintance of mine. I knew her kind of, sort of, in an unfamiliar, unformal way. Resilience, resilience. So I'm gonna share with you five R's this morning that I believe are the building blocks for resilience. And the first R is going to be re-examine. I'm gonna ask you to re-examine your life. What might be standing in your way of you getting to the next step, the next place that you want to be? Is there a barrier? Is there something hindering you? Are you on pause for a certain reason? Well, 24 years ago, after being in the sex trade for 10 years, I finally made my exit. Because the trade was an imposter in my life. It was not lining up with who I wanted to be as a mother, as a daughter, or even as a friend. I had two children by that point in my life. So I invite you to consider, are there any imposters in your life? Are there any things that show up one way, as I described there, but really turn out a different way? So 10 years I spent in that trade to finally uh, exit. I also want to talk to you about the power of change in something small. So when you're re-examining your life, when you're re-examining your business and what you're faced with, it doesn't take a huge change. Some may say, well, coming out of the sex trade is a huge change. Maybe, but it took the first step. So I just wonder, what might you need to re-examine and what small step might you take? So 17 years ago, a $5 bill put my life on a different trajectory. By this time, I had six children, so we go from two to six. I call them my beautiful half dozen. And I made a phone call one night, and I snuck into my garage. I was married at the time, packed my children's bag in a 15-year-old van with a $5 bill in my pocket, and I needed help. And there was a local domestic violence shelter. Nobody had six beds except for the one here in Athens, Georgia. So I'd make my trek from Gwinnett County here. The power of a small change life began to improve for me. What is the one thing that you might do today after you leave this conference that will be the one small change to help build your resilience? And so resilience became a friend at this point. You know, at first she was an acquaintance, but now I really needed her. And I talked a little bit about a resilience. Resilience. I needed her strength. I needed to recover quickly from what I was enduring. The next part of our mission at Divas Who Win is we support women overcoming addiction. So I want to talk to you about the second R, which is resist. What is it in your life that you need to resist? It still goes back to re-examine. There's something that's having a pause effect or a delinquent effect for you. If you really did the research, what, uh, what's the resistance there? So for me, 15 years ago, it was a dependence on substances. And that's my half dozen right here. I had to kiss each one of those babies goodbye and check myself into a six-month intense treatment program because I wanted something different. I re-examined my life and made one huge transition then I used the power of something small to make the next transition. And it was resilience! Resilience! That 
got me through that six-month program. I walked out of those doors a free woman. But then heartbreak came. What do we do when things we don't expect just drop down into our lives? The global pandemic is one of those things, right? What do we do when we try to take all the preventive measures, the protective measures, we look at the books and we study the profit and loss statements and we keep up with the balance sheets, but still these unpredictable situations occur. What do we do? So four years ago, I'm going to wait, but I don't know. Y'all let me know what's happening back there. I'm going to keep going. Uh, four years ago, I entered into the third part of the mission of Divas Who Win, and that is we support... Here we go. FBI agent Sergeant Seals. Miss Santana, this is FBI agent Seals. We found your daughter. She is safe. Her trafficker was apprehended at the scene. Four years ago, I received a phone call on a Sunday morning at 9.33 a.m., very similar to the one you just heard. My 17-year-old daughter had been rescued um, from a family of traffickers by the FBI by the FBI. My heart was broken. I didn't anticipate it. I was on the groundwork in the beginning stages of building Divas Who Win, but it was not going to address the sex trade or trafficking. What do you do when your heart breaks? How do you keep pushing forward? The third R I want to share with you is recoil, because we read that earlier that you're able to recoil or to spring back into shape after bending, stretching, or being compressed. So I'm not a guns person, woman, gunsman, but what I do know is that the recoil, the power of the force going out of the weapon, has a, a tendency to blow back on you. And if your feet are not in position, and if you're not squared off ready for the impact, it can in in a less than desirable way. And that was what I experienced was the recoil from my daughter's experience. I was headed this way and then something came in and crashed into our lives. Are you able to withstand the shock without permanent damage? Some of you have had great impact in the last two or three years. You're still in shock. I come to shake you out of it this morning. The recoil, the impact of it will blow you forward in a powerful direction if you allow it to. We have to recover quickly. We cannot stay stuck. Resilience! Call on her. Make her your friend because, see, a friend shows up when you call on her. So I made her my friend. My family and I built a seat at the table for her because I needed to pass her on down to those six kids. I needed to pass that on. So what are you recoiling from today? What are you recoiling from today? What blew back on you? So I am not a Latin teacher, but I found this word to be so interesting. Google tried to help me with the pronunciation. Resilere is what they told me. And if you were born in the 70s or 80s, you know that guy that was at the top of the screen, that slinky, going down, transforming itself over different stages. So not only do we need to jump forward, we need to take a leap out of that which once thought it was going to hold on to you, to your business, to your family. Call her name. Resilience. Make her your friend. You see, four years ago, I sat on the edge of my bed for 90 days on medical leave. My daughter was moved out of the state. The FBI investigation was 
going on. And finally, on day 91, I leapt from my bed and I called this guy. He thinks he's a rapper. They call him Josh Melton. He has a little cleaning company here in the area. And I interviewed because it was time to go. It was time to pick things back up from where they were. Divas who win Freedom Center would be birthed into this earth because I needed to blow a hole through what blew a hole in me. So I beckon you to strengthen yourself today, to square your feet and throw back your shoulders and move on this final arm. I give you two for one here. Return and recover. So that's the reason, y'all. That's everything. That's those same half dozen just 15 years later. You see, 24 years ago, I didn't know that I had an agency down on the inside of me. Wearing a red dress and painted lips meant something completely, entirely different. So today, return. Today, recover. Today, make resilience your very best friend because if you never need it or you will one day. And today, I stand here before you covered and smothered by the grace of God, number one. But number two, I am resilient. You are resilient. So what I want you to carry away from this speech today is that there is no mountain too high that you cannot climb or valley too low that you can't pick yourself up out of. Resilience is a muscle. The more you work it, exercise it, strengthen it, it will show up for you. I love to have this conversation and keep it going off of this stage. My details are there, but I just want to say that you are resilient.